to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's Clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Hi, it's Adam here, and in today's episode of The Hypnotist, I'll be doing a randomly generated hypnosis session, and uh, I actually got a couple of people reach out to me from my last one called The Ocean of Optimism, um, just saying that they really enjoyed it, and um, that when I started off with this kind of weird destination in, um, I forget where it was, I think it was Vietnam, and like the random words and aquarium, they were like, oh, I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out, but actually they were... Uh, pleasantly surprised, as would I. You know, I had no idea where it was going to end up. So uh, we're going to do another one. I'm going to share my screen now for those watching on YouTube. And the location, if I click spin, uh, is Manchester. Um, a, uh, it's coming up with quite a few UK-based ones recently, but this is Manchester, um, a city uh, in the north of England, if you're not from the UK, uh, I think maybe the third or fourth biggest city in the UK after the likes of uh, London and Birmingham, um, famous for, um, it's got here, um, places to eat and drink, it's obviously got a couple of very famous football teams, um, and things like that. So we're going to use Manchester as the destination. The random noun generator, upset, porn. And this is um, porn as in porn in chess or porn as in porn brokering. So exchanging something for something else as opposed to uh, porn in a, in a sexual nature. And then unlike um, opposite of like. So we've actually got two emotional kind of things. Upset, you could kind of say is linked to sad, unlike, opposite of liking someone. Um, so we've got some interesting emotive words there. And then actually going into the random emotion generator, we have longing, which I don't think has come up so far, longing and pain. So some really interesting words there. I think this is going to be a good one. And now we are going to check on the randomly generated language pattern card. And this is the nine of spades. And it says, and yet. I'll read it out. This pattern is a very effective way of acknowledging a problem, but it doesn't stop there. It then causes the mind to look outside the negative and see a positive reframe that wasn't noticed. Here's the example. I realize it's true that you've been set back by that illness, and yet you've had a lot of time to read and learn new skills. So it's kind of a bridge to a reframe, um, which I think is um, a really useful one, particularly when we've got um, things like upset, pain, um, and, um, and, and various other things that aren't necessarily deemed to be positive, but there might be and, and yet that we can kind of feed in from that. So find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed, relax and enjoy the session. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe in, breathe in a feeling of resourceful relaxation, and as you exhale, just get a sense that any stress, tension, and worries are just leaving your body in your outward breath. Just breathing in and breathing out, and if it's safe to do so, on the next outward breath, simply allow your eyelids to close. And as they close, 
notice that you are able to give more of your attention to the sound of my voice and in doing so enable you to go deeper and deeper, relaxed, now. Breathing in and breathing out, noticing the tension around your eyes, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, is just evaporating, melting away. So as you breathe out, get a sense that it's leaving your body now. That's right. I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine a large football stadium. I want you to imagine perhaps one of the most famous stadiums in the world. I want you to imagine the stadium of Old Trafford in Manchester. I want you to get a sense of this large football stadium just a few miles from the center of Manchester. And I want you to imagine you are on the center of the pitch at a time when the entire stadium is closed. I want you to get a sense of some of the significant games and matches that are played here. What it would be like if you were surrounded by 50 or 60 or 70,000 people cheering and shouting. But here right now, just get a sense that you're on the pitch in a stadium with no one around. You can look up and see the, the seats in the stadium, see the lights above. But get a sense of the peace and the tranquility. I want you to move to the center circle, the, the middle of the pitch. And I want you to imagine there is the most comfortable bed ever there in the middle of that circle. Imagine climbing under the covers, head on a comfortable pillow, and just relax there in that bed, on that pitch, in the middle of a huge football stadium, enabling you to go deeper and deeper relaxed. Imagine that your eyes are closed now on that pitch and just know that you're there and yet you're feeling relaxed, your body sinking into a comfy mattress, enabling you to go deeper and deeper relaxed now. In fact, I will count down from five to one and you will imagine what it would be like to fall asleep in that bed, on that field, in that football stadium. Five eyelids getting heavier and heavier. Four arms, legs, just feeling limp and loose. Three, feeling like it's easier to breathe in and breathe out effortlessly. Two, even your internal organs start to relax, especially your lungs. And then one, just imagine what it would be like to fall asleep into a deep sleep, a sleep that enables you to dream vividly. I want you to imagine within your dreams a giant chessboard. And I want you to imagine that perhaps you are the king or the queen on that chessboard. And your objective is to win the game. And I want you to get a sense that it is not possible to win this game unless you sacrifice a few of the pawns. Those pieces just in front of you are vital to winning the game, but sometimes you need to sacrifice something of less significance to achieve something 
of more significance. Imagine you're on that giant chessboard and that you are the king or the queen. See the other pieces around you like they're life size. And see a pawn going perhaps one or two squares forward, tantalizing the opponent to take that, knowing that you're sacrificing that pawn for a reason to have a strategic advantage. And I want you to think about certain emotions in your life that may seem like it's a big deal, but actually, in the same way that sacrificing a pawn in a game of chess can actually be advantageous, what if experiencing certain emotions, certain feelings, or making certain evaluations have a huge positive upside. I want you to imagine, for example, the last time you felt a deep feeling of longing, that there's something that you wanted so much It wasn't attached to excitement. Maybe it was attached to this feeling of that you wanted this thing, but maybe it was beyond reach. Go back to that moment and feel that sensation of longing. Remember what it was that you were longing for. Think about that emotion. And then realize that you can feel longing and yet realize that longing means you have big dreams, big aspirations, you have desires to have more, be more and do more. And without the longing, you wouldn't realize just how ambitious you are. I want you to think about the last time you were upset. Maybe someone said something or did something. Realize that you can feel upset and yet realize that by being upset it means that you have standards. You value certain things like perhaps respect or kindness. If you're upset, it means you're human, you have access to emotions, so you can feel upset and yet realize that that means you have all the gifts of being human. Being upset enables you to reflect on that moment and perhaps make different choices, set new boundaries and take your life in a positive empowering new direction. Think back to the last time that you knew that you had a dislike. There was something that you just didn't like. And as you realize, doesn't that mean that you have the ability to be discerning? If you didn't realize those things that you liked and those that were unliked, How could you make choices as to have more of those things that you like so you can feel that unlike and yet know that it means that you have that powerful ability to be discerning, to make choices in your life to have less of what you dislike and more of what you do like. And most of all, I want you to think back to a time when you felt pain. Maybe physical pain, maybe emotional pain, maybe a pain that you don't feel anymore. So you can feel that pain and yet realize that pain is a teacher. You learn more from your losses than you learn from your wins. You learn more from pain than you do from pleasure. 
And there are some people that exist in the world that have a genetic condition where they don't feel pain. And because of that, they end up losing body parts, getting injured, bleeding without realizing because pain protects and pain teaches. So you can feel that pain and yet know that pain serves you. That there is gold within that pain. That without pain, you would have lost a valuable teacher. That without pain, you would have lost a valuable protector. Someone to keep you safe. So you can realize that these unpleasant emotions and feelings can really help and serve you and to take your life into empowering positive directions. It's time to leave your imagination, leave the chessboard. In fact, get up out of that bed and back onto that football pitch in the middle of Old Trafford in the city of Manchester and realize that all of this are just thoughts within thoughts dreams within dreams, ideas within ideas. And actually, you are now back in the present, listening to my voice firmly in the present. And very soon, I will count from one to ten to awaken you. You will awaken feeling with a new perspective on life that even with the worst moments, there is always an and yet starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.